My name is Anna Studstill, and this is my lesson on using storytelling in my lesson plan. Um, I would, my lesson plan, my unit is all about uh, civil rights in the United States. Um, so I would start out by lesson, my lesson by telling the story of Elizabeth Eckford. Uh, Elizabeth Eckford is the woman in center in this picture. She is a uh, 15 years old at the time this photo was taken, and she was one of the Little Rock Nine, which was the first group of students to integrate a school in the United States. Um, this photo was taken on September 4th, 1957, which was the first day of school in 1957, and the first day that the Little Rock Nine were meant to integrate the school. Uh, I would start out the story by showing that photo and telling uh, Elizabeth's name and her age. Um, and then I would go back and remind my students about the Supreme Court Brown v. Board of Education decision in 1954, which said that schools had to integrate. Uh, 1957, the Little Rock schools decide to comply with this, um, this decision, uh, and they are going to integrate Little Rock Central High School, which was a previously an all-white school in a working-class area of Little Rock. Uh, they decide to integrate the school by choosing nine students. Uh, the nine students were chosen from a lottery and it was based on grades and um, all sorts of factors. The governor at the time, Governor Faubus, decided to protest this decision. Um, so all of these are going to come together uh, to create cause and conflict um, that leads to this photo and the story of Elizabeth. Uh, the NAACP was on the student sides. They had a plan for all the students to walk together with adults um, into school on that first day. But at the last minute, there was a change of plan and Elizabeth's family didn't have a phone. So they were unable to get a hold of her. And so she didn't know about the change of plan. Um, that meant that she walked alone into school surrounded by a mob of people. You can see all these people following her uh, and a lot of very angry people. Um, two students in the background are seen yelling at Elizabeth as she walks uh, into the school. Uh, she tries to go into the school and she's blocked by the National Guard, which had been called in by the governor to block the student's entrance into the school. Uh, Elizabeth turns back around and she, um, she is very scared and tries to get away from the mob. She walks um, back to a bench. She sits on a bench and is very sad because all of these students are yelling at her. She's being blocked into school. She doesn't know where um, the rest of her, her student, her other nine students are. Um, and this day with the National Guard blocking the school uh, would lead the school district to ask uh, President Eisenhower for help. Um, and he would uh, essentially take over the National Guard um, so that the governor couldn't use them to block schools. And eventually he would send in the 101st Airborne to accompany the students um, to school every day for that school year. Uh, Elizabeth and the Little Rock Nine would go on to have school for that first school year, 1957 to 1958. But then the next year, the governor decided to close all schools in Little Rock as a way to protest um, integration. And this would be the first story that I would tell for my students um, with uh, the civil rights movement um, as a way to introduce the civil rights movement. Um, I would prompt them with the background of Elizabeth's story and then to tell her story on that first day um, and go on and tell a little bit more of, about what happened. Um, it was um, obviously a very scary time for those nine students. Uh, and uh, this represents the four C's because the causality piece is represented by everything kind of being tied into that Supreme Court decision. Without that, none of that would have happened. And all of those steps led to this photo of Elizabeth walking alone. Um, the conflict is obviously there with um, the National Guard, the students, the other people, the governor, all protesting those students going to school. Uh, the biggest complication in this story is that change of plan and Elizabeth not having a phone to be able to find out about that change of plan. Um, and then the main character is Elizabeth. Um, and I think that this story will, uh, will 
hit home for students because she is their age. She's 15. This lesson is designed for juniors in high school, so 16-year-olds, um, so pretty close to their age. So putting themselves in the in the shoes of, um, of someone who had to face that just to go to school. Um, and I think this will also create meaning for them uh, because they can relate to Elizabeth um, and because they've they've experienced conflict, but uh, so they can connect to this story. And also uh, integration still affects them. So this would be a way to kick off a unit on the civil rights movement with the story and um, with a way to uh, help foster transfer because uh, it would stir emotion for them, and we could relate back to this story for the rest of the civil rights movement. Um, and this would also reference previous material. Uh, the students would have learned about the Supreme Court decision already, so it would just build on their previous knowledge. Thank you.